This video explains the include object. Includes are straightforward. They're non-executable objects that contain code segments to be reused in any number of places, like scripts and jobs. Rather than pasting code and maintaining code all over the place, which potentially exposes you to typos, mistakes, and omissions, you simply reference an include object. Include objects store the reusable code in one place. They can be nested. A job can source an include, which can reference another include. To invoke an include, simply use a statement with the ink or include commands and the name of the include object. You can use the full range of scripting options in include objects, but take the following into account. If you use variables in an include, the variables must be declared in the object in which the include is used, otherwise the value of the variable cannot be passed from the include onto the object. In this demo, we create an include object, which we then use in an existing jobs object. For this, we access the process assembly perspective, which is the environment in which we do configuration design. We create a folder so as to keep the environment organized, and then create the object with a title, which is a description to help us search and find our objects. It is something we recommend. The first thing you notice is the include object does not have execution capabilities. This is just a piece of code to be inserted in other, presumably executable objects. This include object does four things. First, it populates three variables. The first with the name of the object currently executing that this include will be added to. We do this with the sysactmeName function. The second, with the status of the same executing object, with the function getUCObjectStatus. And the third, with the run ID of the executing objects, using the function getUCObjectNR. The fourth statement prints a sentence using the three variables of the jobs reports. We save and then add our include in an existing job. To add an include, we use the statement command inc or include. Therefore, we need to go to the process page. You notice that the job uses the ucbtx command in the agent directory. It sleeps for 30 seconds. We cannot add or include to the regular process page, since atomic scripting code always executes before regular operating system code. We want our include code to execute after, so we can capture the name and status at the end of the run. Therefore, we head to the post process page, which always contains the code to execute after the executing object completes. We'll add our include there. This is the include command with the name of the include object. Note the plus symbol on the left. If we click on it, we expand the code of the include. We can save the jobs object and then execute it. We'll display the process monitoring perspective. The job is configured to deactivate automatically when it completes, so it is removed from process monitoring. However, we know it's finished and can retrieve the report from process assembly. To show the results of the include code, we show the post processing report since we added the include in the post process page.
The include does exactly what we want. Print the sentence with the three variables, name, run ID, and status. From this point forward, that include object can be used in many other objects without having to retype or copy the code each time. Also, you can make changes to the include once and centrally, and those changes will be propagated to all objects that use the include. We used it in the post process page, but you could also use it in process or even pre process if you wanted to.